guy. I shaved my head. Well, I gotta get a court this week. Oh yeah. Yeah. Probably shouldn't. Uh, since we're recording, probably shouldn't. No, you talked about it last week. Oh okay. Yeah. I mean, it's just it's not telling who I'm going to court for. Right. It's not me going to. court. It's hot bench, isn't it? Hot. I don't know what that is. You've never seen hot bench. Mm-mm. It's on like Fox at like three o'clock in the afternoon. Nope, I'm not home then. You're not watching TV at work. <laughs> no, I'm, what do you think I do? <laughs> I don't have a TV. I've got <laughs> internet access at work. Why would I watch TV? That's right. I've actually not seen Hot Bench, but I've heard tell of it. It's a judge show like Judge Judy, but there's three judges. Oh, I've seen uh, commercials for that. Yeah, I hate those shows. <laughs> what about what about the old school like People's, People's Court? Court? I did watch People's Court when I was a kid, but it was stupid. I never liked it that much. Doug Llewellyn, I remember him. He was the bailiff. I like not Night the bailiff. Court. He was the interviewer. <laughs> Does that count? Yeah. <laughs> it's almost the same show. Are we recording now? We're recording now. This is the pre-show. Hi, Welcome everybody. Pre-show, everybody. Hopefully, we sound better than we did. We've got a new mic. We've got a new... Um, a new, new Brent. Live. New Brent's here. Same old Brent. Um, and uh, we're going to start things off with the drink of the week. So this week, we're going to look at the Glen Livet. This came to me. This is a transparent bottle because of the green screen, but in reality, it's a green bottle, and it's full of delicious, delicious Speyside Scotch whiskey. This is the most expensive bottle uh, of whiskey that I have. It was given to me as a gift by a friend of the show and friend of us, Matt Beckett, so we thank him. He's a friend of the show. Of course he's a friend well, he of the show. Did, uh, he never did nothing for us, did he? Uh, he gave us this bottle, bottle of, of Scotch. Booze. <laughs> So, Aaron, I know you don't normally partake. Brent, I will give you just a little bit. I yeah, want to partake. I'm, a, I'm not a scotch guy. I like scotch. I, well, I'm not a booze guy. So... Oh, it's killing me. I'll it's give myself a little bit more. Do you a, want it? Just, a, just I'll take a drink of his when he's done. Okay. So this oh, is man. a 12-year-old uh, scotch. Um, it's also the oldest bottle that I have. Um, and, uh, yeah, it's great. I love it. That is a different way of drinking scotch that I'm used to. <laughs> Let me tell you something. Shooting it? That is smooth. Well, I didn't have enough to sip. That's true. You didn't have a whole lot. <laughs> that is smooth. It's good. It's very you can, good. You can tell. I mean, most people are like, booze? Ah, just a way to get <laughs> drunk. No. Quality booze is so much better. Mm-hmm. I just wish I could afford it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right, Aaron. Let me let me just give you a little nip, just a little nip, just a little nip. <sighs> let me tell you something. I think I've had this before. That's the kind of stuff that could be dangerous. Oh yeah, I'm often dangerous with it down here in my recliner playing Mario Kart. The only way to drink and drive. <laughs> No, I'll tell you what I did um, when the summer, when I was just getting turning to fall, I opened up this window right here behind us and uh You mean pulled, this glorious yeah. room? <laughs> right. I just opened it wide <laughs> open. I pulled this armchair over here and I put on the audiobook of Lord of the Rings and I listened to it and I drank the scotch and it was, it was one of the greatest days of my life. I loved it. So It's very warming. <clears throat> it oh, is. Man, it's good. Yeah. I, I was my I have a booze story. Uh, although it's Does gonna... it involve Boone's Farm? No, no, it, no. this is a quality <laughs> oh, okay. booze story. Uh, unfortunately, I can't remember what kind of booze it was. I know it was champagne, and I know it was super high class. Uh, someone I knew was celebrating uh, getting their board game published. Mm-hmm. Um, Ted? Well, I wasn't going to mention his name out of respect, but yes. It sounds like you would mention his name <laughs> um, out of respect. So... He had a little thing at his house, and uh, at the time, we were going over there regularly, and I was part of the regular crew. So he took his earnings from the game sale and bought two bottles of champagne. Now, I don't know how much he got for selling his game, but I know the average for a newcomer like that's about five grand. And uh, he's not hard up for money anyway. The dude owns a plane. Uh but he passed out that stuff, and it was like drinking heaven. <laughs> it was unreal how good it was. And I remember him, he gave out a little bit to everyone who wanted it. And there was, I don't know, 15 or so. It was a huge gathering. Mm-hmm. Um, and I remember thinking, 
I want more of this, but I don't want to ask for more $5,000 right. booze. At some point, you start <laughs> to ask yourself, you know, how much per sip does this yeah. cost? You? <laughs> I, and I, I remember he, he offered me more. I was like, I was like, okay, yeah. I was like, celebration. Good, good for you. And uh, I remember I had two, I don't know, not full glass. It was probably a total of, say, six or seven ounces mm -hmm. of champagne. And I was so hammered. <laughs> so hammered. And it, it, was, it was remarkable. And I was thinking, man, if I was rich, if I was a rich guy... I probably still wouldn't buy this stuff because it was so expensive. But if you if got a go, Uber rich, then you'd so, be in. So, uh, what was the game that he got published? Uh, that was his uh, Silk, Silk Road. Road. Oh, Silk Road publisher. I also have another booze story that doesn't have a happy ending. Uh oh. Uh, one New Year's <laughs> at a certain someone's house. Mud Mountain. <laughs> no, no, this was back in oh, Kentucky. Oh, Lexington days. Mm, and I know uh, this story. I was talking about the other day, Chad. Uh. No to math, excuse me. Uh, one of my brother's friends had made his own wine. Uh, <laughs> homemade and booze. He was never he, dangerous. To be fair, he worked at a chemical factory. <laughs> and so he used the stuff he brought home from work in his everyday boozery. <laughs> so I was I was already feeling okay about the world. And he offered me some of this stuff. And I drank it. And then I drank some more. And I remember as we were getting towards the bottom of the bottom of the bottle, because it was pretty much just me and him drinking it at this point, that yeast was floating. Oh, wow. Huge chunks of yeast were floating in the bottom of the bear, of the of the flask bottle. Hopefully it was yeast. Uh, I got so sick. Tell, I, me, tell me what you did to my blanket. <laughs> well, the blankets. I remember the puke freezing on the porch. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my. It, it was. It went out. It was snow-covered New Year's. I had stupidly volunteered to take someone to pick him up the airport in Cincinnati. Oh, gosh, yeah. But That's what killed me. Before I left, the, boo the booze squad went at it. And my brother's a big guy, and the guy that had the booze was a monster guy, like a Kodiak. <laughs> he was a strategically shaved ape. It was huge. <laughs> and him and Brent started tussling. Ooh. Well, no, no, no. It, no, it was no. fun tussling. Friend, friend. Well, let me tell you something. It, I, they were so liquored up that I couldn't tell what was happening. But I was like, I can't stop these men. So I was like, I'm leaving. I guess my house will be destroyed. <laughs> so when I came back, Brent had passed out. and One of only two times in my entire life. Like I said, I'm, the I'm house not was a boozer. The house was quiet because everybody knocked out. And so I could not find this blanket I had. It was a tiger pattern blanket, right? And so it was winter. So the fall came. I mean, the, the thaw, I should say, <laughs> in the spring and I went out, I hadn't been out on my back deck for months, and there, frozen like in a J, was my blanket with puke on it. Frozen Brent puke. So that blanket got retired, unfortunately. It, it was... <laughs> Thanks, Brent. And I've only gotten, in my very, very young days, when I was 15, 16, I got that liquored up. Uh, I was, what, 22... Or something. Don't look at me. Kentucky days, uh, but that was it. That that was pretty much my end of drinking. I've never been even tipsy <laughs> since that. That I, I, it was one of those when you almost die, and it's probably <laughs> not as much the booze contents as the probably formaldehyde or whatever. Right, I the homemadeness <laughs> of the formaldehyde. <laughs> It, it, I think it changed my body chemistry. I, right, I, I might be immortal. I'm not sure. <laughs> Speaking of uh, crazy superpowers, what do you think of the new Doctor Strange movie, Aaron? Uh, I know you haven't seen it, but I know you formed an opinion. I liked uh, uh, Cumberbatch as, uh -huh. a, as, a, as a tremendous actor. I like him as Sherlock Holmes, even though I don't necessarily like the writing on that show. Right. Um I did not see his turn as Khan because I'm boycotting all those new Star Trek films. They can all go straight to hell. That said, Doctor Strange is an intriguing character in the Marvel Tell universe. Tell me, about, t explain Doctor Strange to me in like a minute because I don't know. He is the about Sorcerer him. Supreme. He's basically the number no, one magic. This so Sorcerer oh, okay, Supreme. Okay. Um, he is a just he's tippity top of the ladder of Marvel magic guys. I'm one of the most powerful guys in Marvel. Mm-hmm. Uh, the gimmick on him was he was a surgeon. Uh, he was arrogant. He he lost his ability to use his hands. Mm. 
I can't recall the, what happened. So he went to Tibet, I believe it was, and, and sought out... Raz al Ghul? Uh, someone to... No, that's, D, <laughs> that's DC. Oh, sorry. <laughs> if he did that, man, that'd be a different comic for sure. <laughs> he sought out the healing powers of a Tibetan priest or something like that. Long story short, they chose this guy to uh, to uh, be Sorcerer Supreme. I didn't read his book, but he's an intriguing character. And I will say, uh, Coverbatch does a good job. He looks like Doctor Strange should look. I mean, I'll give him credit. The cool robe, the way he flies around, blah, blah. I'm actually, I haven't seen a Marvel book movie for a while, but I'm, I'll probably check it out. I know that there's a Doctor Strange pinball table on Pinball FX. Oh, yeah. I played it. I. I, I'm not a big fan of the, temp, the pinball FX tables, unfortunately. I mean, some are okay. And to be honest with you, I tried some. Uh, I think I played a new table last week. No, I think I mentioned it on the show, but I played. I got to probably play Elvis. No, you didn't. You didn't talk about this on the oh. show last week. I, I'll uh, let Aaron talk about this first. My son had a uh, uh, a baseball party for his last his team. It was a pizza party, mm-hmm. and it was at this pizza place that had an Elvis. Actually, I played two pinballs in the past week. I played Elvis and also played uh, the... Uh, this is at Husson's. That's right. Yeah, I played the Elvis at Husson's. Yeah. Uh, it's terrible. Well, it's it's not great. Yeah. No, it's, it it's, is horrible. Yeah. But <laughs> it, I like Elvis. Don't get me wrong. No. There's nothing wrong with Elvis, no, but the it, Elvis not, pinball experience. I'm not talking about the, the subject matter. <laughs> the table layout's horrible. The modes are horrible. Well, no, the gameplay's horrible. My problem with, it, with most of the new Stern stuff... Now, I have not played... Any of their new stuff, uh, I have the, the newest thing I've played was probably that uh, uh, Kiefer Sutherland. Not, uh, what was it called? Uh, uh, the one where he was running out of time. Uh, you know the TV Crank, based on the TV the show. What are you talking about? Oh my Kiefer, gosh, Aaron would have Kiefer heart Sutherland. Uh, you know, twenty four. That's right. I played that one. That's probably the newest one I've played. Or Batman. I don't know which one came out first. Batman and Robin. Batman's one. way newer. The, here's the thing. I just they all feel. Cheap. They just feel cheap. Mm-hmm. I mean, every, I don't, I don't, when you say a pinball machine feels cheap, I don't even know what that means. I don't know what the it, feeling is. I, I feel the exact same way. It, it's something to do and with... And it's not like cheap, like it's cheating me. I mean, right. like cheap parts. Yeah, it feels like the toys are cheap. Yes. Um, it feels like when you hit when you hit a ball and it ricochets off something, it just doesn't feel good. It does good. not. It doesn't feel sturdy, No, I guess. And I, had, I, played, oh, I did play Wizard of Oz. That's the that by far the newest one I've played. And now, did that feel cheap to you as well? Yeah, it, okay. it felt different, but it still didn't. Now, feel, oh, okay. okay, it didn't feel st- like we have. Well, we got five machines right now. Okay, let me tell you something. Yeah, you're 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 so far off. I'm wondering how you're still above water. What are you talking about? <clears throat> Wizard of Oz didn't feel ch- cheap at all. Quality parts. The game. I don't it, like no, the game. Well, it felt it, it. It felt different. It felt light. It just. It didn't have the ball. Doesn't feel like it has the same. Like you said, then you don't feel the impact. Maybe gravity did. was different when you were a kid. No. <laughs> I'm, okay. I've not played Wizard of Oz, so I don't. know. I liked Wizard of Oz. I, I, so I hated Wizard of Oz. I like. I thought Wizard of Oz was pretty good. The the mechanics, the uh, the parts, the toys, everything were top notch. Super colorful machine. The biggest sin about That's that true. is when it gets dirty. <sighs> Well, plus the uh, most of the ones out in the field, from what I've heard, now I don't know about this. I didn't get far enough into it, but they aren't upgraded enough to have all. I mean, that thing shipped with, it, with incomplete soft software. All of them do now. It's stupid. Yeah, I hate it, but that's the way it is. It's just like video games. Well, you know? it, it is, yeah, but this that's, pinball, that's except up. it's orders of magnitude harder like, to yeah. upgrade. Like yeah. if you release well, a pinball not machine, anymore. you just put a USB really? in it and you're done. Yeah. If you release a pinball machine without its wizard mode, eighty-five to ninety percent of people will never know. Right. So they don't care. Well, yeah. Well, but that's that, true. But if the, that was it, that'd be fine. Right. Uh, Metallica shipped without modes. It Just was without modes at all. Oh my god! It was it was start a mode, and then for that mode, you did the same thing for each mode. Oh. It was shoot <laughs> shoot this ramp three times. Now shoot this ramp three times. I mean, mm. now when I played Metallica, Metall, I, I I don't like the band. Ah, uh, you know, I shouldn't say that. I like some of their stuff. I'm um, same way. The but the table itself, quality table. This was when they started ramping the quality back up. I will agree. Some of the uh, the, the early start early two thousands yeah. was really bad. When did that hunting one come out? I played that one at the movie. That's, that that one's really that's bad. That's another too. one that was. It didn't feel great. <clears throat> I mean, the toys in it were 
What was that game we had with the bikers that had that horrible toy in it? Uh, you remember what I'm talking about? Motor yeah, Dome? Motor Dome. It had a toy in that was so bad, we thought it was screwed up. But that's just the way it was. <laughs> yeah, you just hit it and just kind of... And, 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 <laughs> and Cabela's or whatever that one is, Dangerous, whatever, the, the hunting one mm-hmm. that they release, an elk or a deer will come out, and it'll come in. It's on a rail right, right in front of the middle of the play field. So I thought, cool, I'll hit this deer. No, that's not the object. The object is to get it around the deer, to hit the stuff behind it. And I thought to myself, what, well, kind of hunt is, what kind of hunt is this? <laughs> There's a 10-point moose right here. <laughs> Why am I shooting this bunny? <laughs> but, okay, let me back up. Metallica. Yeah. Uh, really, really solid machine. Played good. Sound awesome. Uh, had zero modes. I got online, and I was looking around, and people were praising this game. I was like, what are you talking about? It's the worst thing I've ever seen in my life. Mm-hmm. Why do you like it so much? And I was like, there's nothing to do. Blah, blah, blah. And they're like, dude, you're like on the old software. Like, that that software updated like three years ago. What, it, what were you playing it at? The Skate Arena in Huntington. Yeah. Is there, um, with the new machines, do they actually, it seems like it would be prudent just to build a little Wi-Fi connection no. into them. Oh, no, you just, there's, USB. A, there's a USB slot, like, well, it's in the coin door area. Mm-hmm. You just, or it's behind the glass, behind the glass. You just stick it in, and and you put it into service mode, and you tell it update, and it updates, and you're done. Do you do you receive like a special USB key, or is nope, it? Nope. You, you just, just download okay. it off the web, okay. stick it in. But you're again, done. you have to. That, the problem is you have to, <clears throat> especially when you release when it's not finished. You're relying on the end user to bother. Well, that's the problem. Yeah. They pinball is not made for location anymore. Mm-hmm. Right. Period. It is 100% the home market. Mm-hmm. You might find pinball out in the field, but most of your most of you people that have uh, runs where they've got equipment on site, they're not going to come back to patch pinball for a better experience for the end user because that's not what he cares about. He cares that you put your quarters in the slot, and when you're in a skate arena and you're someone that's not skating... Or you're in between skates, or you're doing. You have to do something during the couple skate because you're a loser, something like that. You put quarters in the machine. Painful that's memories. all he cares about. <laughs> so painful memories. I did that during the limbo. <laughs> so I actually would try that and humiliate myself. That's why I was skating alone. <laughs> <laughs> so in the end, the curve of pinball quality. When Stern was the only people in town, I, and this is what I truly believe, they got lazy. They started putting out lower and lower quality because they were still trying to hit the people with routes to make money that way. Mm -hmm. Now, things have changed. There's more people on the scene. The market is now the home market. So they have turned around. People won't pay for crap if if it's just going to sit in their house. What's the starting price? Because I know these things come eight in 80 grand. different SKUs, but eight grand uh, is the oh, get you in no, the no, no, no. price. Ghostbusters oh, no. is six grand. Okay, you can get a you can get a new pin. The last I, that last time I checked, that you they were selling old stock, new old stock pins. I mean, I'm talking stuff like I'm trying to think of one stuff that predates Atron. You know, the like for example, Wheel of Fortune or like, like Rolling that. Stones. You're forty nine five. Something like you know, you. I think you could break it in, <laughs> but like the new price for a newly released right pinball now, is six grand. It, it hasn't even been out a year. Mm-hmm. It's retail is six grand, okay. so you can find them for fifty five. Have you okay. seen that anywhere? I watch a guy online that has one. Um, they I just got a code. One. Yeah. No, no, no. I mean, actually, what what to do? Play it. Uh, uh, Lethal Frag. If anyone watches Twitch and wants a good streamer that has an actual community that chats about stuff, look him up. Um, he has one. Um, he tricked it out with some LEDs, but that's all he's going to do with it. He just got a code update for it like three weeks ago. And how long has it been out? Like six months, eight months. I haven't been. I haven't paid attention to the pinball game for a while. So, uh, but it's a it's a quality. Now that the code's out, it's a quality pin. Is this based on the old show, the old, old movies? Old, old crew. Okay, good. Uh, Wise decision. Oh, yeah. you don't. Well, first of all, you don't take a risk with the new crew. E- even if they're best thing ever, mm-hmm. that doesn't matter. You don't take the risk. Uh, but the quality of Stern, along with all the other pins, component-wise, is on the rise. That's the whole point I was trying to get to. That's good. I'm just saying, when we go, when we go to the house, and our pins are in varying stages of quality. Yes. But when you sit down, and I'll use wrestle, I'll use uh, Rumble as an example. This is a, and then people kill this game because they don't like wrestling. It's got a complete wizard mode. The modes are interesting. 
for the era it was released. It's got tons of stuff to do. Oh yeah, it's a it's a it's a well built game. We've mm-hmm. had, we never really had hardly any trouble with it, and it's a. <clears> uh, uh, it's and and same with same with uh, Who Done It with the except once you got that little mod to fix that little vault that little. Although Who Done It does not have a wizard mode, they never programmed one. In. Well, but Who Done It's a different type of machine. It's got but, mission modes. But here's the thing, uh, this shows you this was even happening back in the nineties. Uh, Who Done It was supposed to have a wizard mode. They didn't finish it mm. and shipped the machine. Well, you ain't gonna so, be upgrading that one. Nope. Unless they put new ROMs out. Uh, well, I've often wondered why. There aren't people out there writing code for these things, because it has to be doable. Mm-hmm. Uh, maybe there's just, not, just enough not enough interest. Because if you think about it, like the top selling pinball machine of all time, Adam's Family is what? How many units? Five thousand? No, it's in the tens. Oh, it's way yeah. more. Yeah, but I mean, it's nothing compared to writing code for the Atari Twenty Six Hundred. Correct. Or, well, you know. but the the difference is, if you write a wizard mode into Who Done It, and let's say there's only. 2,000 surviving whodunits in the world, those people are going to take interest, and you're going to have a captive audience for your project. They're going to be willing to support you. I would 100%, 100% fund someone to well, write. What would you, if somebody put a price tag on it, what, what 50 do you bucks. 50 bucks? For 50 bucks. Mood? I was thinking 200 bucks. No, oh. no, 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 no. No, that's what I would pay for it. I would pay for that. For okay, me. so let it be known. All you, 12 of you that are our <laughs> Patreon supporters. <laughs> I, I'm going to watch this when I get home and I'm going to start writing it so I can pay me 50 bucks. Hey, there, there's money to be made. I mean, look at the color LED screen. Right. Things, if, if I think that that off. proves Did that they there's money to be made. Who done it? No. They will. Well, like what, I said, what who, titles have they done? I know they did Media oh, Madness. It's, 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 a, it's an extensive list. Yeah, They've got like Twilight 30 zone, machines in yeah. there. They've done a lot. The biggest issue with those is uh not that they're the way they're doing it but they they are cheesing it a little bit now um where they are are they're not colorizing individual scenes like have you seen the star trek one they flesh it i mean it's it's like 64 colors or something but they have all 64 colors uh they had the last few they've done just to add support. Mm. They've just kind of like this screen's like blue and this um, one's green. Not nearly as no, and they're 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 going to get around to it. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I haven't checked on it for probably eight ten months, uh, but I want one. You do who done it? I'll buy it. You fix that flipper and we'll talk. The flipper who done it works fine. Not who done. I'm talking about Tony, Tony Island. Island. Well. <laughs> Let's walk before we run. So what's new in the world of VR? What have you been playing these days? Nothing, because my VR room was going to become a bedroom. Oh, it's so not now. We put we put down hardwood floor and move things around, or not hardwood floor, laminate. I'm not made of money, uh, and it was going to become a bedroom, and then things are starting to turn the corner again, where. Uh, my stepson is enjoying college. He's 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 made the step. Right. So like this weekend, he didn't come home. We stayed up there. Mm-hmm. So it mm-hmm. looks mm-hmm. he's moving less towards not moving, ever coming yeah. home. Yeah. Well, 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 no, no, because mm-hmm. his his whole thing is the reason why he came home last weekend. Food. Well, laundry is probably <laughs> <Yeah>. the, the <laughs> unspoken that reason. Yeah. Bing, that's the number one answer. But he he's a he's a good kid, and he does miss his mom. Some fears, sure. So, and, you, and yourself? Uh, no, I, I'm Sorry this for mom. To get excited about that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm this mom, but I talked to her today. Um, so we're thinking that we're going to be able to finish enough stuff in the basement to not make that a bedroom, and I'll be able to get back in the VR. Hard and heavy again. Uh, on the front, though, Planet Coaster, if it does come out and have VR support, I'm going to buy it day one, even if my VR setup is not operational. I'll what is it? it this, is, this is like a theme park builder, like Roller Coaster Tycoon. It is the same Tycoon people or? who made Roller Coaster Tycoon. Right. Um, they are using the Elite Dangerous engine. Uh, they have... Their big thing, their big focus this time is uh, detailed. I mean, they, you can still modify all the rides and all that stuff, but detailed sceneries, 
Um, they they base score and stuff off of that now. If a, if a guest comes in, he sees, you know, something looks nice, you put a lot of work into it, there's shrubs, there's moving things, animatronics and stuff, they get more excited about your park. Um, they have a mode where you can basically possess uh, one of the park goers and just what be their eyes as they go through the park and get on different rides and wait in line it's the whole park experience what we're hoping happens and we being just i guess the community at large uh we want to be able to control a person in the park go to someone else's park and experience that in vr yeah because let me tell you something if that happens i i'll be on the show sometime Two or three years. Can you? Can you? I'm mean, assuming you can experience stuff in your own park. Yes. Yeah. This is a brilliant plan. What a perfect game. I mean, what's the general state of VR? Are we going up um, or is it spiraling? Because the reason I asked <laughs> is I was at Walmart the other day, and lo and behold, what do I see here? There's a rack of uh, headsets for any phone. Now, my buddy at work saw my headset, the uh, the uh, Gear VR. The Gear VR. He really liked it, so he got on Geek and ordered himself one. And he didn't have the right phone, so he just got like a generic Chinese mm-hmm. knockoff with a fob. And it's pretty good. I mean, all things considered, it's pretty good. And I saw these at Walmart, which are similar. You know, they're probably a little bit better. Now, 14 bucks. And I thought to myself, I don't know what this means. I don't know if this what this means. What does it mean? It is the same thing as any emerging technology with a big butt. Um, the technology, the high-end still keeps going up uh htc is talking about wireless Uh, they they the next generation of vive is going to be wireless they are promised the current generation of vive when the old when the new generation goes wireless they are going to have connectors to make the old one wireless like a pack like a battery pack or something i well it's a lot of tba Mm. um but that in that spectrum keeps going up so the potential of growth is astronomical, uh, and the, there's enough money and there's enough interest for the companies, uh, Steam, uh, Valve, uh, HTC, and uh, Oculus to all keep investing heavily into it. And then you have the other side, uh, where you get the low end. The bare minimum is just two lenses that you hold up to your eyes. Mm-hmm. I mean, literally anyone can do it, and, and a phone. So, the biggest problem is the gap between the high end and the low end is, is tremendous. Staggering. But the quality difference is also tremendous. And you, unless you set someone down or put a vibe on someone's head and say, experience this new thing we have, they can't understand how it's different than putting their phone into a, a contraption and holding it to their face. Right. And I think that the, the issue is is that... <laughs> You're right. You're exactly right. You know, the the big players are pushing the bar higher and higher while you've got this low end market right here that's that's basically doing nothing but providing this this plastic headset when what you need is one of the high end players to say, Okay, we're gonna take something out of this and make it a little bit cheaper and make it about 250 bucks and put it right in the middle so it fits right in. and i think that that's kind of what playstation vr is doing but you need a playstation to do it well they sold out they sold out of the psvrs immediately i have well, that's heard, a good sign. i haven't heard good things about the psvr well, well i heard it was I, mean, the... I heard it was i mean people all the reviews i heard were where i watched a, a bunch of uh, stuff on youtube and there's responses <clears> where they weren't like this is garbage but they were lukewarm it's you know, because and they, and they were taught, and it's, plus the entry point on that is pretty expensive. Even you know, you, well, you, could, you assume that if you're going to go that route, you already own a PlayStation. Wait, but even and if you already not, own one, you've still got there. There are well, the, the camera and the joysticks. Yeah, I understand. Uh, but it's still that's it's half middle the of the price road. Of a Vive. And the problem with middle of the road, just like you were saying, is the experience is middle of the road. Uh, the PS4, maybe the new PS4 will have enough oomph. To push out decent VR, the current PS4, it, it doesn't. I mean, it does. It can do that, it, but it can't mm-hmm. do it. But here's the, of course, here's the. the this is a four hundred dollar console that you have to go pick up. Well, like because I said, I mean, assumingly you already. So have what do we that. do? You know, here I look at this from a whole different angle than you do. You need. You've got. The, the, of course, you have got me one. But the Gear VR is a is a tight little unit. It really is. Yeah, it does. It does very. This well. thing should be your base model. 
You can't. It's well, you, no, they can use it. I mean, you right now you could appeal to the low end market and do something. There's plenty of stuff out there now to 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 make it happen. I mean, you're always going to have your high end people, but you've got to meet somewhere in the middle. I think you've got to meet there eventually. But you're you've got a starting point, and that's cheap. These fifteen dollar headsets, you could do something with those. I mean, you could actually do something. What what with what, it. what could you do? My buddy's got one. Like I said, we hooked his phone up. Okay, three sixty video. It will work. Yeah, exactly. That's the biggest plus. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll give you an example. What okay. do, what do we play with most of all? The Google VR, mm -hmm. Google Maps VR. Mm -hmm. You type in an address, you go there, and you can look around. You can walk yes. around towns. Mm -hmm. It sounds lame. No, it's pretty neat. But it's, I mean, for example, I went on vacation a couple months ago. I went to the place I was going to go to see what the parking lot looked like, how to get there to make sure I made the right turn. Uh, we went to Paris just to look at Rome, just to look around. Mm -hmm. It's quite fascinating, actually. And in some places, they're hot spotted where they're, you could actually go in certain places and you can look around the interior. Yeah, you can kind of move around. Right. You know, points. now this is easy. This is a free app. Mm hmm. I mean, stuff like that. I'm not, again, This these things aren't going to do what Brent's headset does, or even a PS4 one, but it it will let people get their foot in the door and say, wow, it, I, this is incredible. Now, let's see what the next thing can do. Maybe you can get some people to move up. Well, I think that you're going to see stuff like that. Like, I don't know, Brent, if you saw today that uh, Google, with their new Daydream headset, yes. has signed a partnership with the NFL, and they're going to do, and they, they've already recorded a bunch of stuff that they're going to use. It's not just games. It's kind of like, um, what was that HBO show? Um, like, Behind the line, you mean something like a training that. camp or whatever. Well, it's like it's going to be like an amalgamation of many different aspects of life in the NFL. You know, from practice to games and stuff, and it's all going to be three hundred and sixty video. And so there's there's stuff like that that's going on. But in terms of like playing a game, like even something that looks so rudimentary, like Job Simulator, is so far above the capabilities of what a Google. Well, and, and it all comes down to this with, with the VR headsets that are on the computer and the PlayStation, you have depth. You can move forward, and things adjust. Mm -hmm. It's coming to the to the crap system. Or I shouldn't say crap system to the lower end system. They are the Gear VR. I'm surprised it's not already out. If it's not out this time next year, it, they won't ever come out with it. But they have sensors that you put on top of your Gear VR mm -hmm. that allow you to have depth and track your hands. So, so you that would be huge. have now. The question is. Will the phones be able to handle it? Will the phones have the oomph? Mm -hmm. Now, my phone, which is a Note 5, probably not. Maybe the Note 7 non-explosion version. Mm -hmm. uh, when you start getting to that, where they it gives phone manufacturers a reason to push power. Where we've had all this time minimalizing size, mm -hmm. we're pretty much done with that. You can't make it hardly anything. Well, yeah, well, you don't want to, yeah. because now you're going to have smaller components, but people want bigger screens. Mm -hmm. So what's the point? You, so we've miniaturized enough now. Now we have to start pushing power, and there has to be a reason. Because mm -hmm. let me tell you something: you can play Clash of Clans or whatever you want on anything. Mm -hmm. So it's the same way that you know um, graphics cards are driven exactly. by the gaming industry. Yep. My uh, yeah, my biggest concern for VR is, and you were talking about the NFL. I'll use that as an example. Concussion protocol. No, it's no. when you. I, I I like the VR. I like the gear a lot. I have zero time to use it because to use something like that, I have to have the right time with no one around. Where and because I mean I've tried to use it when Luke's around or tr and you just can't it can't be done mm -hmm. people and it, secondly when you watch it like I've seen basketball and the thing and boxing as mm -hmm. well it's tremendous mm -hmm. right but it's solitary you know or watching a movie on it I've watched Netflix on it and it's great mm -hmm. good God it's tremendous but you're you can't watch the movie with your buddy now I've heard that there's a thing where maybe you could have your buddy sit beside you or whatever but it, if you do anything like watch an NFL game you're almost always going to be watching it with somebody mm -hmm. or baseball. And so you have to be in the real... I guess what I'm saying is you have to be in the right circumstance to use it, and that's that's a limitation of it is. Of, of people, not the technology. Mm -hmm. No. And, so, and I don't know... I mean, even in any other form of entertainment, you can put your phone out and fool with it or your, your game, you know, whatever game thing you've got. Mm -hmm. Or when you've got... Or you're, you're by yourself, you can go over and play an arcade game or whatever, mm -hmm. and you're done. This it's a it's sort of a especially with the gear, 
You have to, it's a it's a sort of a thing. You got to take your phone, plug it, in, make sure the phone's fully charged. Mm-hmm. You got to set it all up, get to the you know get to where you want to be. And it's, it's, you're talking about a ten minute thing to get where you want to be. Well, then that's a strategy. You know. Well, well I, I think to answer the the first part of your question about the social aspect, I think that that is where you start to see more of AR and mixed reality. And why has augmented reality not been a bigger thing? It's the perfect solution. Well, they say to the it's social. They say it's coming. They say because it's, then you can see your buddy, you can talk to your buddy, and you can see the craziness yeah, happening I mean, around you. You might have a stupid thing in your face, mm-hmm. but you're still interacting. And if everyone has a stupid thing right. in your face, Nobody's then it's stupid not stupid then. anymore. Yeah. Yeah. Ah, I love this stuff, but man, it drives me crazy. And what drives me more crazy, and then we'll stop, than anything else, is people who get online who have never tried it and instantly say, this is going to fail, this is going to suck. Because it's only sold 150,000 units. Come on, people. How many Blu-rays players were sold the first year? Thousands, not hundreds of thousands. Give Uh, technology a little bit of a chance here. It's going to get there. It just takes time. Didn't it sell out when you bought it? I mean, it was was waiting lines forever to get this Well, and the the internet is full of people that like to pour cold water over anything people get excited about. Well, and I understand that, but some people legitimately... And it's people who don't understand technology, mostly. They don't understand that technology has to grow. The reason why 3D TVs didn't take off when everyone thought that 3D TVs were going to be a thing is because 3D was already a thing. And you can say VR was a thing. VR, like this, has never been a thing. You can't point to the Virtual Boy. You can't point to the thing that plugged into the Amigo or the Jaguar or the... uh, uh, the pods you that the you Amiga stood one. in. You can't say, look, say, p- get those and say, well, look, VR has already failed. No, it's a whole new generation. Now, let me ask you one more question before we wrap this up. What is it going to take for you to buy a whole new Vive? Because obviously, Wireless. so even if it comes out and they say, you can plug your old Vive no, into if this I can, thing. If I can plug my old thing in, in, <clears> all, and it's reasonably priced, I'll plug my old one into okay. the thing. So what's the next thing? That, that they would have to come out with that would make you um, want to spend another whatever. If they said, look, we could not make this one backwards compatible, our new one is wireless, I'd buy it. Mm. Okay. I so you're you're pretty much, you're committed to, to oh, buying oh the next gosh. generation. Why are they, you talking to? The, no, I am certainly not swimming in money. I'm sending, I'm sending a, 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 a stepdaughter to Europe in a couple years, I'm paying for college for a stepson, and as soon as she gets back from Europe, she's going to college. So I'm I'm already I'm pre broke, but there are certain things I would sacrifice to get a wireless VR headset. Okay, I, I've got a quick before we go, just just a little quick. I saw a review of the new Mini NES. I think I mentioned it on the forums. Well, this is certainly not going to cause controversy. Go right the, uh, <laughs> I mean, believe the price tag on this is what? 60, 60, 60 American dollars. dollars. 60 American dollars. You get 30 classic games for your NES. And about 26 of them are good. I'd say there are, I didn't see any duds. Uh, the majority of them are quality titles, yeah. and the other ones are not terrible. They're right. just There's no terrible. urban now, champion. Yeah. There's, now, you've got... But I guess I'm, I'm, uh, I'm disappointed. I've, I've been on the fence on this little gimmick so it's 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 got one controller not two it's got yes it's got a cord not wireless which was so i, I honestly thought the, the cord the cable the controller you got would be a wireless controller at that price and i found out today in the review i was reading the cord is the cord for the new controller is one third the size of the original nes controller it's a 31 inch very tiny. And that is uh, right there. Why can you not pay an extra 12 cents of copper yes. to get a proper this cord? This is being cheesy. I I'll, don't mind a cord because it's true to the old systems, but you can't expect a cord to be... I mean, 31 inches, that's less than three feet. Right. I mean, someone meter here, that Here's the us. thing. Like, old school systems always had short controller cords, but, like, think about the Atari 2600. It had a 27-foot-long power AC you adapter cord. Right and, yeah, right up to Right, because well, you're switching games right next to you. I have, in fact, I just played an NES today and an Atari before I came over here. And now I can't sit here and tell you how far the Atari measures. I, but I can tell you right now... It's feet. In, it's... T- in today's world, 
I'm first of all, I'm baffled that a system that can handle a wireless controller has a wire. Just that in itself blows my mind at that price point. I mean, Jack Specific, for God's sakes, gives you wireless. Well, controllers. I don't think that they. I don't think that the price figured into it. I think, like Brent said, they were thinking about making it more of a nostalgic thing. Have you seen how small this thing is? It's, oh, it's teeny, it's, but it's, it's still a NES. Right. It's not a NES. It's not a NES. It's an HDMI emulation thing. Okay, 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 okay. I mean, that's my other Duh. point. Well, no, I'm getting. <laughs> my point is, what are we doing here? Okay, nobody who buys this thing is going to think that they're getting an original Nintendo. Well, no one with a brain. The people that are going to buy this thing want something that's convenient, that yeah. can plug into their TV, and that can play games that they want. Plug into their van that they're hauling their kids right. to soccer practice. I understand what you're saying. Okay. And I guess what uh, my point is, anyone that wants to buy this to do that, that's great. I mean, anyone can buy it. If, and if people might want to buy it to have a collectible. People might want to buy it because they just love Nintendo. I mean, there's plenty of good reasons to buy it. You know, I, I don't have a problem with it. But anyone that wants to buy this thing strictly to play Nintendo games... Uh, is I, I you're missing the mark. There's so many cheaper ways to do it. You could buy a Wii and buy all Hell, these on virtual console and okay. hook it up. Oh, be no. You're incredibly wrong. Yeah. What are you talking first about? Of all, that, yeah. Game. yeah, first of all, that's not true. Second of all, um, it depends on whether you want to, whether you feel any kind of ethical responsibility to reward the publishers that fronted the money for these games back in the day and allowed these programmers to have a career. I'm not even talking about piracy. I'm not even talking about that. Well, you can't the, buy a Wii and, and buy the You games. can buy a bunch of games in a Wii. I'm not saying you can They're, buy all see, all 30 games, but you could get a good chunk. Three Plus, you've got, ex, you've got a Wii. You've got expandability there. But people don't want that. No. They want something small they can plug into their TV. Yeah. The Wii is small? It's not no, that small. It, and the, have you seen the power supply on the Wii lately? Well, yeah. yeah, I'd have. <laughs> <laughs> have you clubbed anyone with it? <laughs> Has anyone tried to take the rob that, what is the other weapon? How does this thing get power? I'm sure it's, a it's, USB, got, it's a USB. Yeah, it's a USB port USB. in the back. So I'm sure, just like it's going to have a plug. It's not like the, it's not like it's going to be a t super tiny compared to the Wii. When the Wii, oh, oh yeah. yeah, it's going to be, be. It's going to the, the Wii same thing's thing. just got a little power adapter. No, it's not that big a deal. No, it's, 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 it's white and it's, it's square. It's like it's that. Huge. I just it's hooked up. Easy. I just hooked one up today. I'm so just I saying. Remember. These. I don't. It's just going to be a USB that plugs into a an outlet. Like you used to plug in your Bluetooth headset. I I was borderline before the joystick thing. I'm I, I'm just, I'm surprised that they cheaped out on the at least give you a proper well, cable. The, the 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 joystick thing is a colossal mess up, and it's obvious that they did it to sell wireless controllers. There are I think we can all agree yeah, with that. They're making a Nyko, a third party is making a wireless adapter for it that's going to cost ten bucks. Um, I am I'm going to purchase this. You know, I think because, like you said, it's a collectible. How many people pay sixty, eighty hundred dollars for a resin sculpture? You know, of Batman or whatever. This is going to sit on my shelf. It's going to look cool, and I'm going to enjoy playing these games. I might even buy a capture card and fire it up and do some Amigos plays on them. It gives me a reason. You to can play, play all again. these games now, right I, now. You it, can walk over there and play every one. That's not it's, the it's point. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> no, it. it you have you have to understand. Something. Plus, you had an NES for years. It's and and you've got tons of games. <laughs> it's not. It's just like you know we could play everything on emulation, which we already do. But you know we still have Amigas kicking around. Exactly. But this is emulation. It, but it's, it's this is emulation. Okay, how is emulation different than hooking up a compact flash card to your twelve hundred and running games off? It's that? totally different. It's Why? totally different. Why is it well, because it you're is running on actual hardware. But, but what, all you're, all you're okay, doing is putting a storage device But in at there. the end of the day, the output is the same. You could do a double-blind test and not be able to see the difference. Well, that's true, too. On HDMI versus an original NES? No. You're right. You couldn't hook up an original NES to through HDMI. You're right. Well, then, well, well you could. Yeah. <laughs> that would be, it would not be a so good idea. So, obviously... This is for some people, but it's not for other people. Yeah, Just John's, like a definite, John's a definite buy. Aaron's a definite not buy. Oh, no. I, and I'm certainly middle of the road. If I received one of these as a gift, I'd be ecstatic. If I found them on sale or bundled with the wireless adapter, uh, I could definitely see picking one up. Uh, am I going to buy it for 60 bucks with a less than three foot cord? Probably not. Yeah, because I, I really think they just they. It, it, it's a mistake. Plus, there's no way to reset the game from your from your controller. You've got to get up and hit the reset. Well, button. and that's what they. That's exactly what they 
wanted well, you to do. They wanted you to have a 50-foot HDMI cable and set the machine right beside you. Who has I don't that? want it. Well, uh, them. Plus, on top of <laughs> I will say, you're the only one. <laughs> Plus, on top of everything else, from what I read, you have to keep, you, when you have two players on the thing, you have to have the wire controller plugged in at all times. You, the other one, you can be wireless. What? There are no wireless controllers available for it. No, yeah. Yet. The oh, I thought that is the Wii. You're kidding me there. I thought that you had the 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 one that they made for the Wii no, was wireless. As no, well. you you still got to connect that to the oh, system. Jeez, uh, what but the, why? I I, I, I never ever plan on playing this two player. Yeah. Um. No. Why? Like, because I that's they that, got tons it, of good two it, player games I, on there. Uh, if I'm gonna play something two player, I'm probably gonna play a better game, or I'm gonna play a board game. If someone's physically at my house, I'm gonna play something else. I don't recall like. There's Tecmo Bowl. What other two-player games are in there? Balloon, Balloon Fight. Fight. Uh, which, there's also Mario Brothers, game. which I just played right before I came over here. Double Dragon. Okay, so there's a fair amount. There's more. Yeah. I'm just those are the ones that are off the top of my head. I don't think Double Dragon One is two-player. Double Dragon Two. Okay. Double Dragon One's not included. Uh, good move. Well, good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, at the end of the day, the biggest reason I'm buying it is one because it's small and it looks cool to me, and two, I always say that if People offered these games at a reasonable price. I'd be happy to pay for them. It's kind of an excuse for pirating them for all these years, which I haven't bought any of these games, but I've played them all. Um, so yep, I, and I, I'm really I'm in the same boat. I I buy a lot of things uh, that might never ever get played to either support the developer. I I'm not so big on supporting the publisher. There's a few I support, but not many. Uh, so. I, I totally get what you're saying. Now, Brent, would you like to see... Would you be more excited if they released a mini Super Nintendo console with Super Metroid and Mario Kart and Final Fantasy III, etc.? More excited? Probably not. Mm -hmm. Because my youth was the Nintendo and my college days were the N64. That Super Nintendo Middle Ground awesome games. I played a lot of them. Uh, I owned a Super Nintendo. But those weren't near and dear to my heart like the NES or the N64. Mm -hmm. All right, folks. Uh, we hope you've enjoyed this special extended pre-show. Uh, pre um, we had a lot of things to talk about. Uh, and uh, we want to know your comments about all this stuff. If you have pinball machines or you play pinball machines, <laughs> please leave us a comment. If you have thoughts on the upcoming NES classic console uh put them in the put them in the comments too and if you want to buy me a five thousand dollar bottle of champagne <laughs> you're in all right guys we'll see you on the show adios ah, i said it